A 20-year-old woman shot to death and kidnapped in a park near Los Angeles. The disturbing details about the murder of Andrea Vasquez. Welcome to Law & Crime Sidebar Podcast. I'm Anjanette Levy. Whittier police say it appears that Andrea Vasquez and her boyfriend were the victims of a random attack. Last Sunday, just after midnight, police say Gabriel Esparza shot Vasquez at the parking stalls of Penn Park. Vasquez was in her car with her boyfriend when police say Esparza showed up and started shooting. The boyfriend ran, and when he returned, he found blood and Vasquez gone. Her body was found the next night in a field of vegetation. Police took Gabriel Esparza into custody. He faces charges of kidnapping and murder. It's unclear why police believe Esparza killed Vasquez, but they say the attack was random. Esparza is being held without bail. Vasquez's family, meanwhile, has set up a GoFundMe page to pay for her funeral expenses. With me to discuss this case is Corey Pegues. He is a retired deputy inspector with the NYPD and also the author of a book entitled Once a Cop. Corey, welcome to Sidebar. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Corey, this case is incredibly disturbing. We, we always hear that random attacks are rare. Police in Whittier are saying this was a random attack. What is your impression of this case? Well, first of all, if this is a random attack, then we have a monster on the loose, but allegedly they have the suspect in custody who ha- who has done this. Um, this is very rare. Random attacks are very rare. Usually with crimes, there's some kind of connection. The person knows the person, might have worked with the person, obviously family member, co-worker, so on and so forth. So when you see crimes like this and the cops come out and say that it, this was a random attack, it really scares the community. I'm just happy that the alleged suspect has been taken into custody at this time. The allegations are are stunning to me. You know, this girl, Andrea Vasquez, she, uh, Andrea, I should say, is in the vehicle at a park with her boyfriend. Uh, you know, this is something people do, you know, she's 20 years old, um, or uh, actually she's 19. Uh, the suspect is 20 and this is just something kids do. I mean, it's, it's just after midnight on Sunday. What, what could be the possible motive here? Well, so, you know, putting my police hat on immediately, well, it's not even rocket science for, for me, you know, I'm looking at this and the first thing I'm thinking when I caught the case was this is a jilted lover. That's the first thing, because she's with another man in a vehicle, uh, ex-boyfriend, somebody she used to deal with, came up, let the rounds go, uh, and, and ended up striking her and taking her away. So that was my first impression. Um, obviously, I don't have intimate details of the case because I'm not in the police department, but they did a thorough investigation, and this is what they came up with, a random attack. And, you know, I can't wait to see how they came up with this. And if it is not any connection because I'm still a little bewildered by how there's not a connection. Like somebody just came to a park and just shot, let rounds go and then grabbed a the person. Like it just doesn't make sense. And the boyfriend ran and left his girlfriend too, I guess, you know, somebody has to live to tell the story. I guess that was in his mindset, but he, he, he just left her there, but at least he came back. Correct. And you know, that's another part of this, that the boyfriend, takes off, presumably to get help. He returns, he sees blood, and then I'm assuming calls 911 and she's gone. So the killer, uh, the suspected killer, scoops her up after shooting her and then dumps her body over in a field. Uh, It's just, this is kind of one of those things I call a boogeyman attack. It's really creepy. It's very creepy. And so let me tell you, you know, doing two decades in the biggest police department in the world, or at least in the nation, the NYPD, we have just so many police officers, such as deep detective bureau. So when I see these crimes and then I look at these municipalities, they don't really have the structure that we have. We have so much that we could go on. Uh, I'm hoping that they got some outside help, maybe like, you know, the feds out there locally in L.A., to come in and take a look at it because a random attack. So just think about this. If there's a, if he did this random attack, how many other random attacks did he do? Cause people usually don't wake up 
and just go to a park and start shooting. There's even some type of connection, or this could be his first time. This could be his first rodeo, but uh, my experience tells me if he did this once, he probably did it before. So they need to start looking at all the cases that's unsolved out there of random shooters, especially in their parks, um, and start looking at him really hard, pinging his phone, seeing his phone at the time, going up on his phone, seeing where he was at at the time with these unsolved cases. Mm -hmm. Police show up at his at his workplace, take him into custody. No resistance there, uh, according to the reporting we've seen. I guess just says, yeah, okay, whatever, take me in. Uh, that part was a little strange to me too. Well, listen, like, most people don't run away when you you know the cops are there. You know, some people resist. We don't know how many police officers went to the location. Obviously, if he was identified, they didn't just go with one or two cops. They probably came with a team. He's in his workplace. It's only so far that he could run at that point. You have to understand that like, in, police work is all about three things, gathering the information, analyzing it, and then you know deploying personnel or solving the case. And this is what they did. Allegedly, they got this case. They got the information, analyzed it, and all roads pointed to him. I, I want to know how the roads pointed to this person. That's what we're all looking to see. How did the, the roads point immediately to that person? Maybe, again, it could be the electronic footprint. They went up on the cell tower, see who was in the area at the time. Um, maybe some DNA was left at the scene. I, I don't know, but I, I can't wait to see. And hopefully, law and crime, we, you know, we get this trial and see what happens if he doesn't plead out. Corey Piggies, retired uh, deputy inspector with the NYPD. Thanks so much for coming on. Uh, we hope you'll come back sometime. Thanks for having me. That's it for this edition of Law & Crime Sidebar Podcast. You can download and listen to Sidebar on Apple, Spotify, Google, and wherever else you get your podcasts. And of course, you can always watch it on Law & Crime's YouTube channel anytime. Just remember to hit that subscribe button. I'm Anjanette Levy, and we will see you next time.